In this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, the Federal Maritime Commission warns of foreign investors controlling U.S. ports and the U.S. supply chain. I am your host, Salmer Caglano, Chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science here at Campbell University and a former Merchant Mariner. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is who controls U.S. ports? And always a lively dialogue on my YouTube page with comments. And so I thought I'd take a minute and delve into the Port of LA specifically because of a story that came out in Freight Waves regarding the Federal Maritime Commission. So this is the John Gallagher story that came out. U.S. regulators balk at billion-dollar takeover of Ports America. The FMC commissioners warn of foreign investors controlling U.S. supply chains. Now, this had been an issue years ago when Dubai ports attempted to buy an interest in American ports. And one of the things, again, that comes up here is how secure is our supply chain, who operates these ports, who oversees them. So today I thought I'd just look at the port of LA and specifically the seven container terminals there to give you a snapshot. So I will, of course, link this story. I'm going to come back to this story because we're going to talk about what nation is trying to take us over. And it's not who you think it is. So this is the Port of Los Angeles container facilities. This is from their operations side. And there are seven terminals, gonna shrink myself down here a little bit, seven terminals, APM, Everport, Fenex, Traypak, USIN, the WCT, which is the China shipholding area, and then Everglades uh, company terminal. And that's all in the Western Basin. I'll have this linked so you can link it directly to it and gives you the information on the specifics of each of the port. <clears throat> here's the map, Port of LA facility right here that lays it out. So Traypak is up here, the very uh, northern part right here. Then you have the Western Basin, which is in two parts here. One area, this was marked as a Yangmin terminal. Yangmin was Taiwanese. And the other one, China shipping right here. You have the ETS terminal, which is right here on, on kind of the river. It comes out here over to the Yutian terminal right there, YTI. You have the FMS terminal over here, which there's a lot of information, the Fenex terminal going on, and then down here, the APM terminal. So let's look look at each of these terminals. So right here, the APM terminal Pacific. I'm going to link on over to this. This this kind of takes you right in here to the description about it. This is the APM terminal Pacific right here. This is one of the largest ones, a series of five berths right here. You get a good imagery of what it looks like. And if you scroll down here, you get all the terminal features, the amount of uh, acres it has, birth areas, water depth, number of cranes, all the different kind of uh, specifics uh, you need on it. But if you come over here, this is APM Terminals right here. And APM Terminals is owned by AP Molar Maersk. That's what the APM is. Uh, APM Molar Maersk, Maersk is the largest shipping company in the world. And they have a slew of these terminals around the world. So one of these are operated by the Danes. Now I should go back and mention here that all these terminals and all this land is owned by the city of LA. The city of LA owns the port. Uh, The mayor appoints a team of commissioners that those commissioners along with the mayor get an executive director. There is a staff that works on the port of LA. They hire pilots and a whole batch of other people but these terminals lease the land from the city. They don't actually own the the land, they lease it. And so APM is one of these. Uh, The second terminal over here, come back over here, is Everport Terminals. And I apologize, I tried to find some more information here about Everport Terminals. And so Everport Terminals, again, this is uh, uh, them right here, ETS. This is the Everport, here's APM right here, Everport right there. This is the Everport terminals. Let's come over here to the imagery uh, right there. There we go. And Everport, again, you come down here, you get all the detail you need on it. Talks about the specifics about it. Talks about taking next generation ships, talks about the terminals, the shipping lines that do it. All this information is right there for you to take a look at. I couldn't link over to a specific site for Everport, but I was able to pull up They're done in Bradstreet, which gives their information. So it looks like they are home-based in the United States, Everport terminals. Again, I I 
never a hundred percent. I was able to research this as best I could and find that they also operate several other ports and, and terminals, several other terminals, I should say. So leaving Everport, we'll come over here to the third one. And that is the Phoenix uh, Marine Terminal, Phoenix Marine Terminal. So this is Phoenix Marine Terminal berth 302 to 305. Again, come over here. This is FMS right here. You see the gray area. It's right across from APM right here. So this is a, a, a Fenex right here. Let's go back over here. There we go. You'll see it right there. Here's the information for them. Port of uh, Los Angeles, again, terminal information, how much terminal space they have. And I know I'm going kind of quick through it and you're free to go through. I'll have links to all this so that you can go in right there. Again, the shipping lines that use it, quite a few right there. What's interesting about this one, I pulled this up. This is Fenex right here. Uh, terminal began in 1997 as Eagle Marines. It's a subsidiary of APL, American Presence Lines. Uh, American Presence Lines was bought out by NOL, Neptune Orient Lines, and in turn, NOL was acquired by CMA, CGM, the French line. Uh, it's right now owned by EQT, which is an American investment firm. But one of the biggest news items that came out here not too long ago was this one. Uh, CMCGM, $2.3 billion deal to reacquire the Fenex terminal. They owned 10%, but now they want to acquire 90% stake in it. So CMCGM, which is one of the big players in shipping, is looking to acquire that CMA. CGM is French. So that's what we're looking at right there. So let's go back up here to the next one, number four. And this is Traypack. Hop on over here to Traypack, and, and Traypack is right over here, up here at the very top area right here uh, by the Western Basin. And Traypack berths 136 to 147. Now, it doesn't mean you can fit nine or 11 vessels here. Some of the berths, uh, some vessels take up two berths, depends on their size. And right here, you see a little information here about Traypack. They have terminals at Port of Oakland and Jacksonville. Their specifics in the amount of space they have, the number of berths, the, the type of cranes, 10 post Panamax cranes they can use, 960 refrigerated plugs they can use, gets into on rail services, talk about the shipping firms that come up here. This is Traypak's website. They are Japanese. Uh, you'll see right here, established in 1985 as a whole owned subsidiary of Mitsu OSK lines or MOL. Uh, MOL today exists under ONE, the uh, one, uh, one, uh, one Nation Express, I think it is. I forget what ONE is the acronym for, but ONE is the conglomerate of Japanese lines. They're the bright magenta colored vessels now, and they're a composite of Japanese lines. Uh, uh, Ocean Network Express, that's what it is, Ocean Network Express. And so this, this terminal, Traypack, is operated by them. So come back over here to the fifth terminal, I believe we're at. Yep. And this is Usin terminal, uh, YTI. So this is the Usin container terminal. Again, you get that imagery right here. Some great drone shots of Usin terminal right here. This is owned by NYK and uh, uh, MIP, which is another kind of uh, infrastructure firm that operates this. Again, you get the information about the births, only a few births in this. And again, if you look at USUN, it's right up here, very kind of end area of that basin going in there. If you look at the firm right here, UTI, uh, jointly owned by NYK Group. NYK is another one of the subsidiaries of ONE, Japanese firm. And you'll see that they do operations for the Alliance, ONE, Hop Hog, and Yang Min along with chartering for other vessels as needed. And so one of, one of the things you should begin to see here is that these ocean terminals are leased and operated typically by container companies that use them, but over time they have kind of differentiated and kind of morphed out into these private corporations and businesses that operate the area. Let's go to number six, and we're gonna look at number six briefly and then come back to it. And this is uh, the Western Basin Container Terminal, the China Ship Holding. And so this is Burst 100 to 102. That's this area right here. 
It's this uh, kind of uh, goldish area here in the Western Basin. And you get the imagery right here. Uh, some Yangmin ships right here. You can always tell by the YM acronym in the, the first there. Uh, one of the things you see here, uh, China Shipping, North America holding company, fully equipped to capacity serve mega ships, serves up to 14,000 TEU. Those are, those are Neo Panamax vessels. You'll see right here, 10 post Panamax cranes and who they service in the area. And they are basically under, excuse me, this one, uh, this is Ports America. Uh, Ports America, which is the largest terminal operator in Stevedore in the United States. They're owned by Oak Tree Capital, and they have a pretty long history. They're in 33 ports around the United States. And obviously, the China Holding Corporation is the one that's kind of leasing or operating it, this terminal under Ports America. So again, very complex operations here for these ports. They run a whole timeline here of how they came into being. But if you look at Ports America and their operations, uh, you see their locations, 33 ports around the United States, quite extensive. And then the last, number seven of the terminals right here is, again, the Western Basin Container Terminal. This is Everglades Company Terminal right here. And again, we don't have some nifty photos for these guys right here, but this is right here. This is the Yangmin area, the terminal up there. And they're operated by the Terminal Investment Limited, who operates them. They also uh, manage the uh, Everglades Company Terminal. They all operate the Western uh, West Basin Container Terminal. Here's the specifics on that. Only two berths up there, five cranes, which is barely enough for one ship. And they service MSC and Zim. And here is TIL right here. TIL is used almost exclusively by MSC, Mediterranean Shipping Company. Uh, MSC is the second largest container operator in the world behind Maersk. They formed together the 2M Alliance. So you see in LA, for example, APM, which is Maersk, right up here, the uh, uh, Yangmin terminal up here, you see right there, MSC and Maersk have two of the seven terminals right there. So let's go back to the original story here, which is this story right here. U.S. regulators uh, balk at billion dollar takeover of Ports America. So one of the questions I get a lot, asked a lot is, does China own America's ports? And you can see right there, just went through the seven of them. Uh, China Holding has interest in one of the seven terminals right there. You have Yangmin, which is a Taiwanese company. You have MSC, which is a, a French Swiss company, uh, excuse me, Italian Swiss company. You have CMA, CGM, which is French. You have APM, which is Maersk, that's Danish. But the one which is owned by Ports America is the one that's being targeted right here. And if you look at the story right here, two US federal maritime commissioners concerned about Foreign ownership of American supply chains want federal officials to conduct a full and thorough review, waiting for that on demerge, of the proposed purchase of Ports America by a Canadian pension fund. That's right, people. It's Canada coming for us. The Canadians are trying to take over our ports. And how Canada is doing this is by taking over the holding company that operates Ports USA. Again, if you come back over here to uh, Ports America, excuse me, Ports America. They are owned by Oak Tree Capital. Canada is making a move on Oak Tree Capital to get the ownership here. In a letter sent to the U.S. Treasury Sec Secretary Janet Yellen, Commissioners Carl Bensel and Louis Sola. Sola is, by the way, on the way out. He's going to be replaced by that new commissioner that I showed you in the video. Warned that the pr proposed acquisition by the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, that's right, being bought out by Canadian pensioners could run counter to U.S. economic interests. CPP Investments is governed and managed independently by the Canadian Pension Plan and at arm's length from governments, the commissioners wrote. Nevertheless, as a foreign enterprise with a vested interest in the welfare of foreign nationals, a review is warranted. We grant you that the foreign interest involved comes from our trusted northern neighbor and close trading partner. Still, its loyalty, its ultimate loyalty does not lie with the United States. All right. Okay, I have to stop. I, I, I have to stop at this moment. Okay, so we're concerned 
about Canadians owning our ports, which I, I agree, we, we shouldn't have foreign ownership of our ports. However, at the same exact time, look at the vessels that are off the port of LA and Long Beach, where are they owned, where are they operated, who's controlling them? We don't care. We've completely deregulated ocean traffic. We have deregulated under the 1984 Shipping Act and the Ocean Reform Act of 1998. We, 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 if FMC takes hands off to this, there are three alliances with the nine biggest shipping companies in the world controlling 85% of ocean containers. And we're worried about the Canadians. The Canadians. Granted, we shouldn't allow foreign nations to own our infrastructure, but come on right now. You're going to tell me that what's going to get the FMC fired up is Canada? What is China doing right now in flowing this amount of goods to the United States? Where's the checks and balances of the Federal Maritime Commission on that? I've gone, I don't know how many videos now and talked about this. But the thing that's going to get the federal maritime commissioners fired up here is Canada. The acquisition is valued at $4 billion. I, I assume that's US dollars, not Canadian dollars, because that's I don't think that's that much Canadian money. Sorry. Was announced in late September after CCP Investments agreed to acquire Oak Tree Capital's management stake in Ports America, the country's largest port operator with terminals at 33 ports. Again, this goes back, they talk about here, they point out that in 2006, CFIUS, which is the Treasury's Committee on Foreign Investment in the US, reviewed the acquisition of North American operations of P&O ports by Dubai-based DP World. A vote by the US Congress to block purchase led to the creation of Ports America. We literally created Ports America to prevent foreign acquisition of the ports, and now Canada is going to do it. So anyway, when, when, when people tell me they're worried about China owning our ports. I'm worried about China owning one of the largest shipping lines in the world, Costco, Chinese overseas shipping company. I'm concerned about the announced trade deficit, which is the largest in its history in September between China and the United States. Uh, I'm worried that nearly all the ships coming into the United States from the Far East almost none of them are American owned, American flagged, American registered. And I'm not saying we need 100% by any means, but I'm saying that our, our international trade is in the hands of foreign companies. And now we're worried about ownership of our ports by the Canadians. And, you know, I, I just don't see the level of concern here being the same. I have concern about federal ownership of our infrastructure. Absolutely. I don't care if it's Canadians or Chinese, but the concern here expressed by the commissioners about Canada, while almost no concern about issues of trade, and again, the ports of LA and, and Long Beach doing what they want to do, and basically taking a hands-off approach to this entire supply chain issue, yet where we're going to draw the line is the Canadians coming in and buying our ports I'm going to leave it to you to, to make the assessment on that. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of what's going on with shipping and to all our neighbors to the north in Canada. Hello. If you enjoyed the episode, and I can't believe you didn't, please subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. I'm sure I'm going to get some nice Canadian comments. They're always polite, but give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, Feel free to contribute to my Patreon page, which allows me to do this and bring out these quality videos before Canada takes over YouTube and we have no infrastructure at all. I Listen, I, I love Canada. It's one of my favorite places to travel to. I love all Canadians. I am not bashing on Canada. What I am bashing on, once again, is the Federal Maritime Commission and their feign of, of, of shock, shock to find out gambling's going on here. Shock to find out foreign ownership is going on in our supply chain. By the way, the Canadians bought the uh, Kansas, uh, Kansas, I forget what the name of the rail line is, uh, the uh, Kansas City uh, uh, rail line, a uh, controlling interest in it. We, we don't seem to have a problem with the Canadians getting ownership of, of our rail lines. Why should we be surprised about them getting ownership of our ports? Anyway, that's the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Until our next episode, have a good one. Sal signing off.